Terry, I see that power nickel had some good drill results. Uh, maybe you can just go quickly go over them. Yeah, I mean, basically another uh, really great uh, set of uh, results. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, I guess the, the biggest hole was a fourteen point four meters of about one and a half percent nickel uh, EQ, including eight meters of almost two and a half percent. So pretty high grade stuff. It was about one hundred and fifty meters away and seventy five meters uh, further uh, uh, east of our our big uh, 2209 hole, which was uh, which had 40 meters of 1.6 percent stuff, so it was basically just grew this high grade zone uh, and added some more tonnage, and that's what you're looking to do at this stage of the project is build tonnage and build grade. For those types of drill results, that grade, how does that sort of measure up to other uh, nickel deposits in the area or in North America? So uh, basically, that would be top of the heap really uh you know the uh, i would say uh talon metals has got you know uh you know, comparable grades pops even better grades uh for their project in uh uh called, called tamarack it's at michigan and minnesota the border there they've got a great project there and and their market cap for that project is about 300 million but it's maybe maybe the grades are about 20 percent better and our market cap's 25 so <laughs> gives you a perspective uh but uh you know in canada you really have uh, power nickel and the high grade nickel sulfide, and then you, then you're looking at uh, a bunch of uh, really uh, low grade nickel sulfide and and uh, uh, these types of deposits that are uh, you know uh, big 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 deposits like you know billion tons and and but but grades are low 0 0.2 0 0.25 etc. And and so a completely different animal. When when we compare ourselves to nickel projects, we don't compare ourselves to these other Canadian projects because it's like they're really a different animal. It takes a much higher degree of capital to develop them like a billion dollars and it would be at a much lower return. And, and right. it, whereas ours would be a lot less CapEx and a much higher return. So we look at other comparables like in, uh, you know, Noron would be like it, like Wailu bought Noron from, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the Pubco for 480 million US. Uh, that's a very comparable project and that's in Northern Ontario. Uh, but it's no longer listed in the public markets, and it's owned by Wiley, the, the big Australian uh, mine developer. So, uh, but other other project would be, you know, Premier Nickel in, in Botswana. I guess the obviously we talked about uh, Talon, uh, you know, some Aussie projects. You know, that's where we're, we're looking as comparables. Okay, and and you mentioned nickel sulfate for uh, sulfides for a couple of times, and just for viewers, why is that important? Yeah, it, basically, there the generally nickel would come in uh, nickel sulfide uh, or nickel laterite deposits. So the laterite deposits are, are much more carbon uh, intensive to develop. So you know, call it dirty nickel. Really, that's that's the word for it. And and they would be, uh, and it, it's just a vernacular that would attach to it because it takes a lot more energy to produce a, a ton of nickel. Okay, so uh, Indonesian nickel that's you know being used, you know, for the Generally, the batteries that, that you know that the uh, Chinese EV uh, uh, manufacturers are using, they're, 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 they would be laterite deposits. The Philippines the same. Uh, whereas uh, the sulfide deposits, especially the uh, high grade ones, they're a lot less energy intensive to make, so they're considered clean nickel. And generally speaking, they're the easiest to move to class one nickel, which is what the uh, battery manufacturers need to you know uh, complete their process on the battery side. Now, earlier this month, you also had another uh, pretty good drill results from a zone called the Wildcat, which is, you know, further away from your main deposit. How does that help your with your, uh, you know, for the actual company and the project? Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty spectacular result. Honestly, it was uh, five kilometers uh, north uh, east of our of our core NIST main. And um, it was on this ultramafic sequence, the same one. So we have this ultramafic sequence of about six kilometers, and we've basically studied pretty hard this one kilometer. Um, and, and and we think this whole sequence is charged. So we 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 saw a target at the northern end, visibly uh, from surface, and we drilled it. And at sixty meters, we hit uh, almost uh, eight meters of one ounce PGMs. So uh, that's uh, really spectacular, bonanza grade. Uh, super valuable, and uh, it's it's indicative of 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 what happens with massive uh, nickel PGM uh, concentration in an area. So that's happened at Norilsk in Russia, happened at Voices Bay here, 
So when you see that within a, a proximus range, uh, it's very exciting. If you're if you're uh, if you're a miner, that's like holy cow, we could have something massive here, and that's sort of what we think. We think this thing is all connected, and uh, so that really was exciting for us. Um, and uh, we and we brought that out, but uh, Mr. Market didn't think it was so exciting, Chris. But uh, <laughs> what can I say? I can't control yeah. him. <laughs> so, and I guess you're going to look at maybe putting a couple more holes in that between the two zones to see if you can get some connection between them. Yeah. So, so, so basically, uh, the process is this. You know, we, we, that was a winter target, so it was a bit of a marshy area, so we won't be able to drill there until it freezes up, which will be like probably November, December. Um, so we we'll certainly plan to follow that up. We're, we're, we're doing right now this uh, uh, this new technology called ambient noise tomography. So uh, what is that? It's basically uh, an invention of fleet space technologies. And they, they have this, um, I guess, highly sensitive seismic, I'll say. Uh, we came across it at, uh, at the Talon Metals project. At, at, at Elon Musk at Tesla had brought it to Talon Metals. And they've been using it to expand their nickel project there. So we looked at it and, and we came, concluded that it could help us. And what it does is you, you'll put these uh, geodes, uh, think of it, it almost looks like little uh, landmines, but they're not. Obviously, they're, they're these little stainless steel uh, geodes, which actually are uh, like sonar uh, pulses. And they, they send these pulses of, of, of sonar sound waves down in the ground 2,000 meters, reverberates back, and is captured as a sound map. And what they do is pretty innovative. They basically correlate that sound map to your hard scientific data. So, for example, where we had that 40 meter hole of 1.6% yeah. nickel, that's at a particular point in the earth, and that'll correlate to a particular sound map. Well, that sound map is now a signature because we know that's a that's a that's a massive sulfide sound map. So, where are, are there more of those? And so then then the software looks for those and starts to identify targets for you, you know, for for your future drilling. And then you tie that in with your, you know, your uh, airborne EM and your IP and gravity, and hopefully where you get those concentric circles, that reduces your risk in drilling, and we can get to those drilling areas quicker and explore a lot more. You know, so every nickel sulfide mine in the history of the world has been multiple pod, so it's highly likely NISP will be as well. So you know, the, these, uh, you know, airborne EM hot points and the signatures that we're going to get from fleet are probably other pods that we can. You know, start to tech in, and that'll be between this main and the five kilometer uh, wildcat hole. And we'll start to fill that in, and hopefully, we'll have this uh, multiple bonanzas of, uh, of, of, of uh, rivers of nickel and PGMs. So, for investors, there should be good news flow from here starting, I guess, like in the uh, midsummer to the end of the year. With the yeah, we, we actually, we'll, we'll actually have another set of assays, the final set of assays of our winter program will be out in about two or three weeks. And then we'll have the airborne EM, which will be pretty exciting for people to see. And then we'll have our metallurgical study. Then we'll have the, uh, which is sort of end of August. And then we'll have our updated 43101 in September. And uh, and then by then we'll be getting drilling results back on a new drone. So this is going to be an action-packed new central, uh, you know, for the next uh, couple of years. So uh, Power Nickel's, uh, you know, on fire here right now. <laughs> Well, thanks, Terry. It sounds like a lot of activity for investors to keep watch on, and for you know, for investors where you're you're trying to build value for the company, they should be uh, adding this to their watch list or taking a stake in the company. So we, we look forward to watching the news flow, uh, and thanks for your time today, Terry. Thanks, Chris. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. You too.